Good morning. If I had told you just a few months ago that I was going to zoom, you would think I was using a verb there, zoom, that I was going to go very, very fast. Now when we talk about zoom, it's a noun. It is an online platform that we use to be able to uh, communicate with each other during this time of pandemic. Uh, one of the, the companies that I think has probably benefited uh, the most from, from all of this. We do have this huge need as human beings to be together. And during this time, we, that has uh, sorely tested many of us. And we've had to be very creative with how we continue to connect to one another. You maybe have seen some of the drive-by birthday parties for children and for others, or the people who go to nursing homes and stand outside the windows but can talk to their loved ones outside of windows. I saw this other wonderful uh, way that uh, people in a St. Paul neighborhood have been trying to stay connected and also stay a little bit healthy. And so let me let you uh, see what they're doing up in St. Paul. Humans are just not wired for isolation. But when your home is on Palace, you adapt splendidly. Evening calisthenics on Palace ramped up with the COVID-19 threat a week and a half ago. We call it the pandemic 15. The dogs are gaining weight, so we're gaining weight. Careful. Somebody jokingly said, we should do exercise. Big circle. Momo Hayakawa Koenigs grew up immersed in Japan's legendary daily national exercises. Cross your arms. We thought, why not? Let's give it a shot. One, two. All safely 10 feet apart in their circles. Every day, there are more and more neighbors. I don't know where they're coming from. Good for the body, good for the soul. Dear Elizabeth. And all good tonight with toilet paper. Yeah, that's right. Just some transportation trouble. Well, Clark, we need the wrench for the scooter. Take it from Kim Cox. Isolation's wrong. We're not created to be in isolation. Around the world! We're doing community as best we can. Responsibly exercising Around their right to remain connected. Maybe the best part, the way people linger after, still in their circles, but not quite so socially distant. I love what Kim Cox had to say. We are not created to be in isolation. We are being community as best we can. And I don't know if she's a person of faith, but that word created is pretty powerful because we know indeed we were created to be in, in community. In the very first chapter of Genesis, we are told that God creates human beings, male and female. They are created in God's image. And then in Genesis 2, we have a, a different story of creation. If you didn't know it, uh, by the way, Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, starting with the fourth verse, uh, are two separate stories about creation. And in the first story, human beings are created last. In the second story, the human male is created before uh, the plants or the animals and of course before the human female. And so let me share with you the, the second story, creation story, the part about human beings in Genesis 2. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, and to the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and brought her to the man. Both of these stories tell us that indeed we were created to be together, not necessarily uh, in, in marriage, all of that certainly, but we were created to be together as human beings. 
I love it that in the first story, God says, let us create them in our image. And he had this idea of the Trinity, uh, the community of the Trinity. And then in the second story, you have this wonderful idea of the man has all of these animals, but even with all the animals, he is incomplete until he has another human being with which he can share life. And so during this time, as the pandemic wears on, and it's gone on longer than any of us hoped or even thought it might, as it continues to, let us find ways to continue to connect. If you know of people who may be lonely, who may need a phone call or a letter, or need you to show up and talk to them through the glass of their house or whatever, be creative. If your neighborhood needs to start exercising, find a way to help your neighborhood exercise. But let us be the people of God. Let us not grow weary of doing good, but continue to live out the gospel story that we are not created to be in isolation. And as Christians, we are called to help bring people together. And so I encourage you to do that, knowing that you can do that because God is with us. Amen.